the tremors in the Reykjanes Peninsula of Iceland, where we have the uh, recent eruption, which is continuing over a month now, it seems, uh, is continuing. The depth of these uh, earthquakes is gradually decreasing, but yet they are deep enough that actually can be probably related to more tectonic tremors, breakage of the rocks and movement of the blocks of the rocks, than the magma movement actually moving toward the surface, the way that is leading to eruption. What we are seeing is a decline pattern in the Swartzengi. We see it also for the Grindavik. They are the same for the other areas. So they are not unique to this area. That must be something related to the weather. But what we are seeing in that form is that these earthquakes are forming along a line that is the uh, extension happening in this area between the volcanic system that we have, between the Eurasia and America plates. And this uh, movement uh, creates pathways for the uh, eventual eruption of the magma. For example, we have a Green Dubbing Rift Valley that we have eruption here. Extension happened and eruption followed that. Uh, we are seeing the GPS data showing the accumulation of the magma under the source and yes, Kipatsik Heron. This is a Skipatsik Heron. We see that there is a little flattening at the end of it. It's gradually getting, you know, less, uh, the slope is getting less gradually and uh, inclination is less on this GPS data diagram. You can see that. The same for the source thing, we can see that. That shows to me that the amount of the magma entering and initially it was a steep, then it's gradually getting uh, flattened, means that the magma coming and going out almost are getting an equilibrium. Up to now, it was that the amount of the magma entering was higher, so the GPS data was showing the rise in the land, when the amount was going out was a small. Now we are saying that the amount of the magma coming and going out is almost reaching equilibrium. The eruption is increasing gradually. The magma is increasing. And that is actually uh, reaching the surface. We are seeing evidence for that in the month of the huge amount of the smoke actually today we see there. And I expect to get more if we are not going to have a separate eruption here and have just the increase of the magma input to this K1 crater, the last remaining crater here. Then we expect that this uh, new amount of the magma arriving at the surface at the lava reach further. We have seen evidence for the outbreak near the Grindavik to the east side of it. And in the night it glows, you can see that. So eventually this may lead this excess amount of lava reaching the surface and then uh, breaking through toward the south. At the moment it's going toward the east laterally. Then may actually start to go the way it should have been doing without the walls if the walls were not there toward the sea and this is quite possible now if this situation continues and the input of the magma to the k1 continues the lava flows toward the road and toward the ocean this is something that we will uh, we may be seeing something similar to what happened in the Cambrai Vieja volcano of course, we may not see a King Kong or dinosaur appearing that. Probably you can say this is a different climate. But what is interesting is that's the comparison between the two. And then all those scenarios that we had for the emission of the gases and formation of the, for example, hydrochloric acid and such things in the reaction of the lava with the seawater may happen again. So let's just wait and see it. Maybe interesting things are waiting for us and... Uh, uh, between one week to two weeks, we may have an increase in eruption or separate eruption in this area.